Hey guys, how's it going? I am outside because sunlight is a good thing and I'm tired of being inside. So this is probably the one and only video that you'll see this week where I'm not actually in my room with a whole bunch of skeletons. Yay. So I wanted to walk you guys, bless you. There's a dog over there that is sneezing. Hello dog. Um, I wanted to walk you guys, I wanted to walk you guys through uh, the practice passage that I've included in this week's module about amnesia. And with this passage, we're going to be practicing identifying main idea um, and just kind of reiterating the difference between that and topic, as well as between major and minor supporting details. Okay, so this first passage says, you may think it's bad to forget your homework, but what if you forgot who you were? Amnesia is a condition where a person loses some of their memories, like details about their personal identity, but still may remember how to do things, like play a piano. One type of amnesia is called post-traumatic amnesia. Post-traumatic amnesia is usually due to a head injury, like a serious fall or a knock on the head. The degree of memory loss may be related to the force of the injury. A simple whiplash may cause a person to forget the moments before the accident, but a more severe injury may cause a greater loss. For example, the victim may not remember who certain people are or may forget details about their own identities. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna identify when we're looking at this particular short passage is what is the topic? So the topic is usually gonna be one or two words, a word or a phrase. Uh, and in this case, our topic is amnesia. Just broadly, this passage is about amnesia. Then I'm going to take a look at what this passage is saying about amnesia. So we know the topic is amnesia, but what about it? In this case, this passage is referring specifically to post-traumatic amnesia. That was the main focus. Yeah. Hang on, I gotta go through a ball. Are you ready for this? Woo! And she's just not gonna bring it back that's okay okay anyway back to what we were doing okay so we know that the topic is amnesia we know that the um, main focus or point about amnesia is is post-traumatic amnesia um, and now we're gonna see uh, what major details are listed about it so within that tiny paragraph um, it basically just explains what post-traumatic amnesia is um, and what it does. So that's all. Um, so, so far, that's all that we have. Let's take a look at the second passage, at the second paragraph. This one says, Ansel Bourne was a preacher, carpenter, and most likely an inspiration for the name Bourne in the movie and novel series The Bourne Identity. Up until 1857, Bourne had been a carpenter until he was called to religion. After 1858, he worked as an evangelical preacher until 1887. He set up shop in Norristown, Pennsylvania as a candy maker using the name A.J. Brown. Three months later, he woke up not knowing where he was with no memory of the previous months. The case of Mr. Bourne has fascinated psychologists and some filmmakers for years. In this case, I would say that the topic of this passage is Mr. Bourne. <laughs> I would also say that what this passage is saying about Mr. Bourne is that he's an example of someone with amnesia. So this passage, this paragraph, is just offering us an example of amnesia. The third paragraph says the term amnesia refers to complete or partial memory loss. Almost all of us will experience some form of amnesia in our lives, even if it's just a simple case of verbal amnesia like forgetting someone's name. Fortunately, there are things that you can do to prevent amnesia. Here's a list of foods you can eat to improve your memory. Almonds, walnuts, bananas, honey, apples, and black pepper. Though these foods may not reverse post-traumatic amnesia, they should improve your memory in daily life if you eat them regularly enough. Okay, so this one's a little bit confusing. Now you might think that the main topic or focus of this passage is a definition of amnesia because literally the first sentence is about what amnesia is. It's partial memory loss. However, that's not what the whole passage is about. That was literally just one line in it, right? So the whole passage, the whole passage was about different foods that you can eat to hopefully slow or prevent amnesia. Extra dog. Hi, extra dog. 
What do Finding Nemo and Robocop have in common? Not much, except that they both feature characters that suffer amnesia. Amnesia is a common plot device in movies and TV shows, but how accurate are these depictions? In television and movies, memory loss caused by a knock to the head, post-traumatic amnesia, is shown as fairly common when it is actually quite rare. Unlike in movies and television shows that feature amnesia, most knocks to the head will not produce memory loss. In reality, memory loss or amnesia is much more likely to occur as the result of a stroke, brain infection, or brain surgery. So, while amnesia causes people or characters to lose memories in both film and reality, characters are usually fixed by taking another knock to the head. In reality, people are not cured so simply. Okay, so I would say that the main focus of that passage is um, how amnesia is portrayed in film. And what they're saying about it, I would say, would be that it is oftentimes inaccurate. So the way that amnesia is portrayed in film is inaccurate. That's what I'm going to say uh, the main point of this passage is. Okay, so our second to last passage here says, What would you do if you woke one day and discovered that you could not create new memories? You might remember everything that occurred in your life up to the point of an injury, but could not form new memories beyond that. This condition is called interrograde amnesia. And it is difficult to treat, but doctors and therapists recommend these steps. First, use technology to help. A cell phone with a calendar reminder can do much to offset this condition. Second, use helpers. Having people to assist with daily tasks like paying bills will prove quite helpful. Lastly, seek therapy. While there is no cure for interrograde amnesia, memory training may help the afflicted live a more normal life. Currently, there are no chemical medications or drugs that will alleviate this condition. Okay, so I would say that overall the main point of that passage is just to tell us what treatments or resources are available if you do suffer with amnesia, if you wake up one day and can't form new memories, not necessarily losing your memories, but if you can't form new ones, they're saying that there's really nothing that you can do other to like ultimately fix it other than, you know, kind of manage the condition and go to therapy. Okay, last but not least, the brain is the most complicated system in the human body. The brain is separated into two hemispheres, or halves. From front to back, the brain is further divided into three parts, the forebrain, the midbrain, and the hindbrain. The forebrain is where most reasoning, thinking, and emotional activity occurs. It is also where most memories are stored. The brain controls reflexes and processes sensory information, sight, touch, taste, etc. The hindbrain processes basic survival functions, like breathing and maintaining a heartbeat. The brain is truly the most amazing system in the human body. Okay, so while this one was not specifically about amnesia, it was just a nice little closing thing, just to kind of, you know, emphasize that, you know what, the brain's a weird thing, but it's kind of a cool thing. So looking at the passages that we just read in this large piece, um, we had a passage that was uh, about amnesia in general, like what it is and what post-traumatic amnesia is. Uh, we had a passage that was an example of amnesia, Ansel Bourne. Um, then we had a passage that was about what kinds of foods you maybe could eat to help manage that or prevent that. Uh, and then we had a passage about the portrayal of amnesia in film and how it's inaccurate oftentimes. Um, then we had a, a passage that kind of explained to us that while you can't really just fix something like that overnight, there are ways you can manage the condition. And then finally, we had a closing passage that said, the brain's weird. So overall, if I were to answer the question, what is the main topic of the passage? I would say amnesia. Uh, question B on your sheet there, which asks what is listed about the topic. Well, that's basically everything that I just said. That's, you know, what it talked about in each paragraph. I would just list those, ta those things that were discussed. Um, and then finally, it asks, what do the major details have in common? Well, they are all um, aspects of amnesia or related to what amnesia is, what it looks like, and how to treat it. So then, if I'm going to answer question two on your sheet there, which says write a sentence that expresses the main idea of the passage, I would have to take all that information, all those different things about amnesia, and condense it into one sentence. Like if someone had not seen this article, what am I going to tell them in one sentence that this article is about? And I can't just say amnesia. That's the topic. That's not the main idea. The main idea has to answer the question, well, what about the topic? What about amnesia? So if I'm going to put all of that into just one sentence, I'm going to say something along the lines of 
Um, the main idea of the passage is that amnesia is an often misrepresented condition of the brain that causes you to either forget things or be unable to form new memories, and which, while manageable, has no cure. So that's one sentence which just kind of sums up everything that I read. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope that helped make a little more sense out of this. Again, if you have any questions, you know how to reach me. Um, but thank you all. Good luck with your studies and have a great day. Bye.